Well, Father, I pray for the hearing ear. I pray for our hearts to be open and our ears to hear this morning, Lord, what you have to say to the church. Open our minds to this truth, Lord. Truly, Lord, open our ears up to hear, Lord. And open our hearts up to understand what you're saying to the church. Lord, give me grace to preach the word the way it came to me, Lord. Give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to understand. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, if you have your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 12. Uh, we're going to continue on mind renewal, or really, I call this one the mind of Christ, part three. And I actually, I have so many different ways to go this morning. How many of you honestly, be honest, how many of you, oh, I just, yeah, I know what you mean, Charlie, you know, want, wanting to preach, it just it's the burns in you. And I'll, I'll get you back up here soon. I know you're probably burning. I can see you're burning to preach. So we'll get you back up here. How many of you ever can say like the Lord woke you up in the night and he, he gave you something? Like he gave you a word or something. Um, sometimes I just wake up because I'm older and I just wake up, you know, lay there for a while and go back to sleep. And, uh, but sometimes I woke up this uh, Saturday. I woke up at 2 o'clock or a Friday night. woke up at 2 o'clock and man... I couldn't go back to sleep, and I just had this word setting on me, it just setting on me. It literally, Jeff, drove me out of bed. Like, I had to get out of bed. I had to be up, and I had a race at 9. I had to be up at, like, 5 anyway, and I knew I wasn't going to go back to bed. I knew I was going to have to load up on the coffee. But I had this word, and here's what, here's what the Spirit spoke to me, and the Lord will speak something to you, and then he'll drive you to the word just like to confirm what he's telling you. Amen. We don't believe stuff outside of the Word of God. We believe the Word, word of God. That's God's written Word to us. His, the revelation of Jesus is in there. The fullness of His revelation is in there. But you have to dig into it, mine it. Get it. The Word won't help you if you don't dig in and mine it. it it'll, it'll just fall on deaf ears. But he told me, Brad, and this is like thought. I, go, I thought, is that true? Is that true? And it just drove me up into, into the Scriptures. He said to me, Anything in your life that you are not free, any area of your life that you are not free is not from me. Any area in your life where you are not free, that's not from me. He goes, I came to set you free. I want you to be free. Now, you can be physically, you could be in jail and be free. Someone say amen. Amen. There were people that were slaves in Paul's day, and slavery back then was a little different than, than what we think of slavery. And Paul was preaching the gospel, and he told slaves, he gave them certain instructions, but even to the slave, he said, you are God's freed man. You're free in Christ. He wasn't advocating slavery, of course he wasn't, but he was telling you, you can be free right where you're at, in any situation of your life, you can be free. And folks, you should be sitting here today, no matter what trial you're going through, no matter what obstacle is in your path, no matter what you're facing, you should be, can be, and will be free. Jesus said, or Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom or liberty. Think about it. If God is there, there's freedom. When Jesus got up to preach, he preached the Emancipation Proclamation. He got up the first time he preached, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and I am going to preach liberty, freedom to the captive. I am preaching freedom to the captive. God wants you free. If you're bound up today in your emotions, if you're bound up in sadness, if you're bound up in sorrow, if you're bound up in sin, sin is the ultimate bondage. Anybody ever had a real sin get a hold of you? You don't know what's a bondage until you try to get free from it. If you're drinking alcohol and you're drinking every night and getting drunk and you never fight against it, you don't know what a slave you are. 
The day you wake up and realize it's wreaking havoc on your life and it's destroying you and you want to stop and you try to swim the other way, that's when you begin to know that you're a slave. Lust, men, women too, but men, is the biggest slavery racket out there. The spirit of lust will bind you. You will not be able to serve God. You will not look and think about women correctly. You won't have freedom in your life. You'll be distracted and bound up. You will not have joy. You will not enjoy life. If you are bound by a spirit of lust, it'll suck the life right out of you. If you are here today and you're bound by it, it's impossible for you to have joy. Because lust will just take the life right out of you. If you're in an adulterous affair, you're in bondage. You're in horrible bondage. If you're a married man and you just love another woman, you're in bondage. Sin binds. Jesus frees. That's why I'm not going to preach. I'm going to preach, but not, I'm not going to preach so much on it today. That's why Jesus was healing people, because their physical disabilities and things that were going on in their life were binding them up. Wasn't anybody that he didn't heal that came to him in faith that came to him. Nobody. He didn't leave anybody in bondage. Someone say amen. He didn't. It's his nature to set free. And I think every healing was an object lesson to us. I want you to be free. The children of Israel, they were in bondage for 400 years. They were enslaved. And they got so used to slavery when God set them free and they went out into the wilderness. They had such a poverty mindset. They had such a slavery mindset that they had to march around in the wilderness for 40 years. All of the children of Israel had to die in the wilderness so a new generation would be raised up that didn't have a slavery mentality. They had a freedom. Every song we sang today, do you guys like the music today? Did you enjoy the lyrics? Uh, you know, Charlie, you just jumped right on it. Gave, uh, what's that, 2 Corinthians 2.14. Just jumped right on it. It said that God, ev everything we do in Christ, he always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Doesn't it say that? He always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Those slaves had to die off and a new breed had to come up that were ready to embrace freedom. One of the biggest bondages, one of the biggest enslavements is religion. You want to be a slave? Get religious. I went to India. Those people are bound by those demon idols. I saw temple after temple with devils on the front. They're devils. That's what they were, demon devils. Temples build up with demons and they go in there and they make their sacrifices and they go through their religion trying to get prayers answered from these demons and those demons do not care about them. Those demons want to bind them, destroy them, take their soul and put them in hell. Religion. Religion is what we do for God outside of God's power. Trying to earn favor from God. True faith in Christ is what God is doing for you. That's what great, I've been talking, preaching, have I, I haven't preached my scripture yet, have I? Romans, we've read it the last three weeks, we'll read it to make sure this is a legal sermon, but Romans says, in view of God's mercy, or in view of God's merciful to you, he is abundantly graceful to you, in view of God's true faith in God is God's mercy on you. How many of you here came, and you came kind of, you, you didn't necessarily want to be here, you maybe came kicking and screaming? Anybody? Your, your wife told you to come or someone, and you wound up down at the altar. I know we got some. And they wound up down at the altar. Someone had to beg them, cajole them, make them come, and they wound up down here praying. That's because God wanted you here. And God wanted to set you free. I have too much to preach, so I'm just going to preach. Because I have too much. That, that the Lord was... Real freedom in God, God's real heart and desire, God does not want to bind you in any way. 
Your decision to walk with God is 100% free will from you. You give to God only what you want to give. God is not trying to take something from you. God is not trying to put a weight on you. He's not trying to destroy you. He is not trying to harm you. He only wants to do you good, and He is not even going to make you, make you serve Him. He may cause you to by pouring out my prayer to God... Because everything in God works by love. I, and I, 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 if I go there now, I'll get there too soon. But real freedom, real worship of God always comes from love. Always comes from love. God wants you to love Him. And that'll be freedom for you. Victor Frankl in the prison camps, I've mentioned this many times, said that when he was in prison camp... That he had a realization. He would be walking on these death marches, people dying, people falling out, people being beaten, and he would visualize his wife, and he would think back to when he was in Vienna with his wife, and he loved his wife, and he said he would be enraptured thinking about the beauty of his wife, who, by the way, died in the concentration camps. Those concentration camps are the devil. I said last week, I'm afraid of my, anytime your government, anytime a group of people gets absolute power and control over you, they are going to put you in a concentration camp. They are going to take away your freedoms. Any unlawful, ridiculous government, Nazi, communism, anything like that, even in this country, when they start taking your freedoms, they are no longer serving you. They want you to be their slave. It's the truth. I can't preach on it. I can't preach on it. I can't. Men want to bind you in slavery. Oh, I can't go there. Lord, if I go there, I'll get that worm open. Our country was founded on the principle of freedom. We had the declaration of what? Independence. We had a constitution that was set up to do what? To protect your rights and liberties. They know that absolute power corrupts absolutely, so they set up a system where we would not be under the bondage of a few people. And now, through the swan, I don't want to call it, because of the government, people that aren't even elected making decisions for your life, they're trying to put you in bondage. People are ruling, people that have money, people that have power are trying to put you in bondage. They want you to be bound. And we're just like, bah, bah, okay, bah, and do it just crazy. I don't want you to help me, Lord. I want to preach the gospel. My point is, Jesus won't do that to you. Jesus doesn't want you in bondage. I'm not a rebel. The Bible says obey your leaders, pray for your... I do that. I obey my leaders. I pray for my kings. I obey my government. I served in the Air Force. I am a patriot. I will obey my government and do what they say according to uh, the word of God until they have me do something that's against my conscience. And the minute they tell me I can't preach Jesus, the minute they tell me I can't preach the gospel, the minute they tell me that I have to do something for, that I know is wrong for me or my family that's evil or wrong, that's when I won't obey them. I am not going to shoot them because I'm not a shooter. I'm not. I don't have to obey them when they cause me to go against my conscience. Otherwise, I'll obey. I'm a servant. Uh, Lord, help me. I, I, I got to stay on my task here. Jesus wants you to be free. You can be free in jail. This man, Victor Frankl, was free contemplating the love and the woman that he loved on a death march because the Nazis who took authority and control over him took everything from him, even the hair on his body, every possession, everything he had. His wife, his family, his mom and dad died there, his wife died there, and he's thinking about his beloved, and he said he was enraptured until he snapped out of it when they started beating people around him. He snapped out of it. But he, had, he said, I had bliss and peace for those few moments because I had love in my heart. He said the one freedom that he would not let them take away from him, he had the choice whether he was going to hate them or not. And he said, I would not let them make me hate, because if they made me hate, I knew I would be like them. That's why slander, some of us get on these things, we start slandering people and making fun of people. That is the opposite of Jesus. The minute you start acting like them, they've won the battle. Bible says don't resist evil in that way. You know what I'm talking about. Someone 
The Bible says, bless those that persecute you. Why? Because you don't want to become like them. I don't have an interest in binding any man or any woman, and you shouldn't either. If we allow them to pull us down onto their level, your enemies and the devil and all this stuff, we become like them. Come on. Love is that thing. When you love God supremely, that's the thing that sets you free because there's nothing you can say about me or nothing you can say to me that's going to stop me from loving you. Whether I love you or not has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with me and God. I'm going to love you no matter what. I'm going to love you no matter what. That's freedom. That's getting the Spirit of God. Didn't Jesus love them? I jump on the chair. Didn't Jesus love them on the cross? When he said, Father, forgive them, he's on the cross dying for you. He was on the cross being crucified for you. He was taking your guilt and your sins on the cross. It was you that put him up there. It was your rebellion. It was your sin. It was your disobedience that put him on that cross. And he's standing up there being crucified for you. And he's looking down and saying, Father, forgive Rodney. Because he doesn't know what he's doing. Someone say, Amen. Not just you, Rodney. <laughs> Yeah, her too. He's pointing. He said, her too. What? Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> amen. I thought you were saying, her too, her too, not just me. Someone say amen. Because Jesus was free. You know, like about, I'm not like Jesus, like, you know, like totally, I, I want to be more like Jesus. This is my desire. Jesus would do stuff. He didn't care who was around what they would say about him. I want to be more like that, but I'm not totally there yet. Where God said, you know, he'd have a thing, the Lord would show him, spit in the mud, pick it up and slap it in their eye, and he'd do it. Right? And he said he didn't care what, he would obey God. He didn't care what the people around him thought, said, or did. That's freedom. Freedom from the opinions of other people. Isn't that real Freedom. If you don't care what people think about you, and I don't mean so you can be stupid, but you can really, that's freedom. I had a guy yesterday, I was at running, and I was gotten a good conversation with him, and um, he had something going on with his ear and something with it, you know, and I, I just kept thinking in my, well, what is he going to think? You don't do that, do you? I wanted to pray for him. But even more than wanting to pray, I just like, Lord, what would happen if I, Prayed for him. What was my fear? That nothing would happen. Failure. Yeah, and I've prayed for people before. I've done it before. But I'm thinking too much about what people might think or what might happen rather than just thinking about what, what's the one question Brad Kittle should be asking himself. What do you want me to do? And when, Jeff, when I do that, I'm a free man. I, I said, okay, Lord. Okay, I, I believe that's what you want me to do. I'm going to do it. Did I tell the story last week about the Muslim guy? Was that, I'm getting my weeks confused. I was out running. And, uh, oh yeah, because I visited Larry at the hospital. God's so good to me. I'm, I'm going to digress here. God's so good to me. Guys, do you know God wants to walk with you every day and talk with you? I'm telling you, he woke me up and said, I want my people free. Anything that's not freedom is not me. Start fighting against it. Start, start resisting it. Don't accept it. There are things about my personality. There's things about me I know God paid for, and I may not express them right. I may not be a perfect person, but I want to be everything that Jesus called me to be. I want to be free. I don't want to be bound by people's opinions. If I come here next week and there's two of you here, I want to preach as bad as I did this week or as good as I did this week. I don't care. I want to be free from it. I want to be free from the fear of not having money or having money. I want to be free from the opinions of people. I want to be free to obey God. Who's the one person that loves me? Who am I going to be with forever? Who is my heavenly bride? Who's the one that I need to free? Who is the one that paid the price for me? Who should I be loving? Jesus. Who should I care about more than anybody in the world? Jesus. Who's got my life in his hand? Jesus. I've got to get free of your opinions of me. Someone say amen. Everybody's opinion. I want his opinion. But he is such a lover. When you're seeking after his good opinion, when you love God, so this is how I had a guy talking about, about this. I'm going to get back to my story with uh, Larry in the hospital. When you love God supremely, what happens is he fills you and you start loving people supremely like he did. That's what happens. Love God, love people. You don't love people. If, 
What's it called when you just love people and you don't love God? You know, it always gets off into error. What is it? It becomes hypocrisy. It's humanism. It's humanism. Love, if you start loving people and you're not loving God, then you get into all kind of crazy stuff. Loving, oh, oh Lord, don't let me go there. <laughs> loving God becomes, oh, Jesus. Loving God becomes, because you're respecting an eight-year-old, you let them, the little girl, become a boy because you're a humanist. You want them to be free, to be who they really are, and you're just as blind as a bat and ignorant. Because you don't know God, the Bible says you become fool, you become foolish. Amen. People are starving all over the world and you make laws where 30% of the cows got to be butchered. Europe right now, 30% of the cows got to be butchered for, because they fart. I'm sorry being so crass and they put methane out in the air and, and there's people starving and will starve because of it. You're a humanist. When you love God... You won't get deceived by garbage. It's the truth. God will talk to you. God created this planet to last as long as we're here. And it'll last as long as God wants it to. It, now, do I think we've got to take care of our planet? Yeah, we've got to take care of our planet. Yes. We want to pollute. Yes, yeah, we want to clean. Yeah, we want to be good stewards, right? But when that stuff becomes a God, and it, it just becomes foolishness. When it becomes sorcery and idolatry, it becomes foolishness. And their foolishness is going to cause plagues and stuff to come on this world unless it's stopped. People are going to starve to death. That's humanism. When you love God, you're not fooled. I like the who. They had that. They're going to concert in October. I'm not going to it. They're, they had that song, I won't be fooled again. We got to play that in here. I won't be fooled again, right? That should be our motto. I'm not going to let the devil fool me. Fool me once, fool me twice. You're not going to fool me three times. I'm not letting the devil fool me. I fell for that the first time. I fell for that beer and alcohol and drugs. Drunk. I fell for that. I'm not going to fall. I won't be fooled again. I did that and hurt my family. I won't be fooled again. Oh, I fell into that sin. I did that. I won't be fooled again. No way. Jesus is a freedom act. God, when we're created, God gave you free will. What, the reason sin and death and all these things came into the world is God gave man free choice and free will. He never intended man to be a robot. He never intended for you to be a slave. He will never know if you really love him unless you have free will to love him or not. That's the truth. You are free to believe God, to love Him, or to reject Him. And when you accept God and you allow the Spirit of God, in, the more we allow the Spirit of God into our heart, I got more scriptures, into our heart, the more free we'll be. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. I preach forgiveness all the time because forgiveness, not because you set that person free, because when you forgive, you set yourself free. You set yourself free. You're not setting them free, you're setting yourself free. And people still won't do it. Well, you don't know. Oh, you don't get it. You're a slave to sin and your own unforgiveness. Let it go, you'll be free. Let go of your lust, you'll be free. Let go of your lukewarmness, you'll be free. I'm preaching to me too. God wants to walk with you and talk with you every day. He wakes me up and he talks to me. He's teaching me. I'm not catching on as fast as I want to, but I'm catching a little bit here and there. He talked to me about money, and I don't have time to preach on it, and it's all good. You've got freedom in money. You got free. He wants you to be free financially. He was down. He wants to talk to me. Do you know, I, I can't go off on money today, Lord, don't let me. But do you know that you spend eight hours or 40 hours a week making money and you act like God's not interested in it? You go out and work like, a, some of you work like slaves for money, 80 hours a week and all this. For money, and then you talk about in church, you act like God's not interested in it. He's absolutely interested in it. And he's not greedy and he's not selfish the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil, roots of all sorts of evil, to love it. We don't serve money, we serve God. God wants to bless you there. 
He doesn't want money having you. He doesn't want money to be the goal of your life. He doesn't want money to capture your heart, but he does want to bless you. How many promises do you need me to quote before you believe it? How many scriptures do I got to quote that tells you that God wants to bless you before you believe it? He doesn't want you to be a slave to it. He doesn't want you to be greedy. He doesn't want you to be selfish with it. He wants you to be generous. He wants you to be free. He talked to me so much about money. And I got up, and Larry, you're in a hospital, and the Lord put it on my heart to go visit Larry. I knew I was going to. And as soon as he's talking about God talking to me, as soon as I told Pam, I'm going to go see Larry tomorrow, immediately I heard the voice of the Lord say, oh, you can run. I heard it just as clear as the bell. I told Pam, oh, the Lord just told me. He said, you can run over at Sharon Woods Park. It's right across from the hospital. I said, yeah, Lord, thank you. For, I, just, I knew he, rem I said, thank you, Lord. I forgot that that park was there. I'll go for a run before I go see Larry. So I got up in the morning, got my shorts on. Got my sneakers out. Oh, I don't have... Brian, show him my sneakers. I'll have to tell him about it here later, about my sneaker, sneaker story. And I went over there. <laughs> I had to choose which sneaker I was going to get. I got a couple sneakers. I gave a few away. I got a couple. I, got a, I, I brought the... I got a story about sneakers. I'm, you can put it down. So I had to pick out my sneakers. I got the right sneakers. I had to choose which shirt I was going to wear. Women, I'm like you. I like to match. I know you guys don't care. I like to match. I have my Kenya flag, my Kenyan flag. I don't know. I haven't worn my Kenyan thing in a long time. Put my Kenya muscle shirt on. Got some green shorts and my sneakers. Went out running. And do you know, I got done running and had a little gym thing. I start working out in this little gym thing. And all of a sudden, I'm telling you, God speaks to me. He speaks to all of us. God orders my steps. This woman walks up to me and she saw my Kenyan flag on my shirt. And she goes, Hey, man. No, no, no. She didn't. That's just Jamaican. She said, she said, uh, she had an accent. She said, uh, hey, are you from Kenya? And I, what? She goes, are you from Kenya? I go, no. She, well, she goes, there's British guys that live in Kenya. And I go, oh, okay. And she starts talking to me, and she looked at me, and she recognized me. And then I recognized her. She had a hat on. I wouldn't have recognized her. She was from Kenya. And the reason she came over and talked to me is because I had my Kenya shirt on. I knew the Lord put that on my heart. Didn't, didn't know it at the time. And so her and I had been at a conference, uh, Walmack and Brian Simmons. You gave me the Brian Simmons ticket. I had been at a conference. I sat next to that woman at a conference and talked to her. Me and Pam, about an hour. We talked to her about an hour. Loved, loved, she's a real estate person. She goes to a church down in Johnstown. Lovely woman. And I said, wow, Lord, I'm so glad I wore this shirt because I got to talk to her. Then this thought rolls up. I'm talking about God talking to us. I'm talking about being free. I got this thought in my head, Lord, you really order my steps. You really order. And just as I thought that, I saw this guy standing, you know, 20 yards, just standing there. He had a little Adidas thing on, and I'm like, oh, oh, you want me to talk to this guy? I said, okay, Lord, well, if you want me to talk to this guy, then make him stay. I want to finish my workout. I had a couple things to do. Sure enough, that guy went on that bike path and just stood there and didn't move. Like his feet were anchored there. And I'm like, okay, I'm not getting out of this one. So I did my thing, and I went over, and the guy was a Somalian guy. Thank God I'm not angry at Somalians. Someone say amen. amen. A bunch of Somalians live in our country. Thank God I'm not angry at them. And I said, uh, you know, I asked the guy, I started talking to him, and I said, are you, are you Islamic? He said, yeah, I'm Islamic. And I said, well, I believe that God, I believe that Jesus wanted me to give you a word to come over and talk to you. And he started talking to me about what he believed who Jesus, I said, well, you believe Jesus is Isa. He goes, yeah, and, I, and he believes he's the prophet. And I just talked to him a little bit, talked to him about Jesus, and I told him the message of Jesus, why Jesus was here, and I just talked to him a little bit. Told him as much as I could and when I was done, but I told him that Jesus, who Jesus was and what he was about. Jesus cared for him. And the conversation was over, and I walked away. And I left knowing that God put me right there at 
that time to talk to that woman and to talk to him. He completely ordered my steps. And when I went over to the hospital, you ever get those beds that get in the hallway? And they block you, you can't go around them, you're trying to get somewhere and you're doing this thing. All of a sudden I'm going side to side trying to get around this bed and this person takes, all of a sudden he swings this bed into this room and I thought, good, I can get around this guy. And uh, it was Larry in that bed. <laughs> I'm trying to get around him. And that guy turned Larry in and the Lord is saying, Brad, I order your steps. Literally, Larry had just got out of his uh, MRI thing, the thing they were doing with Larry. Literally, so much so that I walked in up on him as he was going into the room, like my steps were being ordered by the Lord. Had I been there, if I hadn't gone running, if I hadn't talked to Sedek, if I hadn't talked to uh, Rosalind, if I hadn't talked to them, I would have been early and I would have probably missed Larry. Someone say amen. amen. But as it turned out, God literally ordered my steps so much so that I couldn't get around Larry when I was trying to get to his room. Isn't that amazing? Well, if God can order our steps, God can be so precise in our life, God can do anything in your life that he wants to do. Amen. Folks, what it is, is we have to let go of our life. And I don't mean like in a slavish way, like, we got to let go of our life and give it to God as a living, sac oh, as a living sacrifice. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. We let go of our life. And when we let go of, and I do sometimes, I don't always, I'm not even trying to say I do. When I do, it's incredible. I got so many testimonies of letting go of my life, getting the, just getting God in me. And I had the most amazing time Friday at the gym because I, I prayed in the morning, I prayed in the spirit, that means tongues. I prayed in the spirit, I got in the word, I marched off to the gym and I'm just pouncing on people with Jesus. I met uh, one of Bo's friends, talked to her about Jesus, gave her a word, and started talking to her. Oh, I know, Bo Bromberg. Just had a great time just getting full of God, getting full of Jesus, allowing him to come in my life. Whatever we give to the Lord, he's going to set it free. I don't want your money. I'm not saying this because of your money. But when you give God your finances, when you put, truly put it in his hands, turn it over, number one, you're going to be free from greed. God promises he's going to take care of you. What time is it? Five up. I'm going to read you one, I'm going to read you one story. God wants to set you free financially so you're not bound to anybody. The word says God supplies all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus, and he does. When it came to tithing, he told the children of Israel were under a, a tithing covenant. It was law. They were under a law covenant. I've talked about this before. Abraham tithed by faith. I'm not going to go into it today. They were under a law covenant. God said, if you do this, this is what I'm going to do. Didn't he say that? He did. Now, that's law language. If love language, love language is I want to. I should never give an offering where I'm trying to get you to give, like against your will, trying to cajole you or beg you or, I don't need your money because God's going to take care of me. You need to give to the Lord because you need to make Jesus Lord of your life. You need to turn things over to him. It's only fear that stops us from giving to God anyway or giving to people. And I've, I've said this too many times preaching, but I'll say it again. Jeff, you didn't have any trouble spending money on Evelyn when you were dating her. I, prom I don't know that, but I promise you, you didn't. When you like a girl, okay, Braden, I don't want to embarrass you. I won't mention you by name. You got a girl you're dating, and I know you like her because I see your Instagrams, okay? 
and, I, and plus I know, I bet you don't have any problem spending money on her. I bet it's the easiest thing. Do you want that? I'll go, I'll go spend $20 to win you a 10-cent teddy bear. I'll show you how macho I am. Give me a shotgun that shoots air, and I'll spend $20 because I want to get you a little teddy bear that will cost me $5 at Walmart, right? What else do you want? Do you want popcorn? What do you want? You go to a movie, you buy the pop. She makes 30 bucks, 50 bucks an hour. You make 10, and you're buying everything for her because you love her. You remember how you dated your wife and you courted her, and she didn't have to beg you to spend a penny on her because you loved her. You like how she looked, Jeff, in those hot pants. I know you told me you did. <laughs> Some things I shouldn't say, should I? <laughs> he told me, and he spent a lot of money on her, too. And she has the pictures. Sorry, Evelyn. I'm sorry, Evelyn. I meant that more for Jeff than for you, Evelyn. It's the truth. Guys, love, I'm telling you, love, Paul says, <laughs> Paul, bring it back, Jesus, come on. Paul says, the love of Christ compels me, restrains me, overmasters me. That's what that word means. The love of Christ compels me, overmasters me, constrains me. Bad things happen in our life. You've got to give them to God because we sang a song this morning that said everything that the enemy meant for evil, he turned it to good. People have lost loved ones in this church recently and your loved one is as happy as a pig in mud. They're in heaven. They're singing songs with Jesus. They're rejoicing and they're happy and you're down here and you're still miserable. If they were here, they'd slap you. Say, come on, I'm happy. Don't cry for me, Argentina. I'm happy. And I know we mourn. I get that. There's a, I, I, I get it. There's a time to mourn. But everything that the enemy means for evil, we sang this morning, God means it for good. That's called a trial. That's called a test. That's called a temptation. We believe God, and you, you went through something this past year. We believe God even when things don't go the way that we think they should go or the way that we want them to go because everything that the enemy meant for evil, ultimately, God is going to turn it for good. You may lose a battle. I promise you, you're going to win the war. So flip over to uh, Samuel. I'm talking about love. It's 2 Samuel. You guys, can I do one more scripture, guys, and then I'll be done? And I'll really try to bring this to a close. Someone say yes so I can do it. Okay, thank you. I don't know the Old Testament as good as I know the New. I think it's 2 Samuel. Well, there's that one too, Lord. 2 Samuel 24, 24. You remember when David danced with all his might before the Lord? Do you know David was a man after God's own heart? Do you know your worship, that means your physical worship, when you worship God. Paul said, give your life, present your body as a living sacrifice. That is your spiritual worship. Everything in your life that you do, how you treat your wife, how you treat your kids, how you do your job, how you, uh, you know, your ability to serve. Everything that you do is a spiritual act of worship to God. That's why you shouldn't complain about it. If it's a test and a trial, make it a praise to God. Because everything that the enemy means for evil, God will turn it to good. That is the testimony of my life. In my life, and I've had trials, I have not gone without pain in my life. And I've been tested in my life. And every time that I praise God through the trial and through the adversity, God always turned it for good. Every single time. In 2 Samuel chapter 24, David was a man after God's own heart. It's at the end of the chapter. Verse 18, David was a man after God's heart. What David wanted more than anything was God. I want to be that way. I don't know that I'm, I, I want to be that way. I think I am, but you know, sometimes I waffle, Jeff. 
But I want to be that way. I want to be where I'm a man after God's. If a man has God, he has everything. Randy, if God is for you, who can be, who can mess, if God is for you, who can mess with you? Nobody. And if you don't care, if you're like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and you don't care if they throw you in the fire or not, because you ain't bowing, and you ain't burning, uh, you know, you ain't bowing, and you ain't bending, and you ain't worshiping their gods, and you don't care, go ahead and pitch me in the fire, Jesus will join you in the fire. He will. Say, I'm not serving the devil for any reason. I don't care if I have to die. I'm not serving the devil. And I'm not bowing down to the devil. I'm not proud and haughty. I'll bow down before people. I'll humble myself before you. Eric, if you said something bad about me, I'd humble myself before you. I would. But I'm not going to bow down to the devil. I'm not going to serve the devil. You hurt my feelings. I'm not going to serve the devil by getting bitter. Because then I'm serving the devil. Amen? I'm not going to worship him, let bitterness in my heart. No way. I'm going to serve God and let the chips fall where they may. <clears throat> That's how I want to be. That's how I want to be. Uh, on the day, God, uh, God went to David and said, Go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Arnah, the Jebusite. So David went up as the Lord had commanded through God, and this guy, Arnunah, looked at him and saw the king was coming. And he said, he bowed down before the king. His face was to the ground. And he said, why has the Lord come to my servant? He said, to buy your threshing floor. And David answered, so I can build an altar to the Lord. An altar is a place of worship so that the plague on the people may be stopped. Arnunah said to David, let my Lord have whatever he pleases. Take whatever you want. I offer it to you. Here you are, even your burnt offerings on the threshing floor. Ox yokes on my wood, O king. Are you not gifts to you? All this to the king, are you not also said? May the Lord God also accept you. But the king replied to Aryana, No, I insist on paying you for it. For I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. That cost me nothing. Now, I'm not just talking about oxen and pigs and money. Serving God costs something. To be a living sacrifice, there are martyrs in church history. People may not like you. People may talk about you. I'm not going to tell you serving God may not cost you something because it will cost you. Jesus said it will cost you everything. If a man's going to follow after me, he says it's going to cost you everything. But I promise you, in this life, I'll give you more than a hundredfold and eternal life in the next. David knew the best deal in town was serving God. Do we? Jesus plus nothing equals everything in this life and the next life. A lot of times our misery is because we're not surrendering what God wants and God just wants to take the poison out of your hand. Amen? Amen? You look we look at alcoholism. People, God just wants to take that curse off your life. Renewing our minds, presenting our bodies is our spiritual act of worship toward God. And as I said before, when we get that right, then it goes right downhill to how we treat everybody else. It goes right downhill. How I treat you is, is a reflection of how I think about God then, because you're made in his image. Easy to love you because you're made in God's image, even if you're flawed. Anybody holding on to anything? You don't want to let go of? Amen. Anybody else? Just me and Dana, right? I'm flawed, folks. Amen, me too. I won't have to give an altar call if you all say yeah, then I'll just forget the altar call. I got, I'm flawed. 
I get scared sometimes. I hold on to stuff. I want to throw. I want to depend on myself more and more. There's nothing you'll ever offer God that you'll turn over to the Lord where you won't get the better deal. He said in Mark, in this life, a hundredfold, and in the world to come, eternal life. He says, I'm, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to walk with you and talk with you. I am going to be with you. Yes, persecution comes. Trials come. You'll be swimming against the stream, right? There, you're going to be going against the narrative of this world, but God will be with you. Does anybody have anything they need to give to the Lord? I'm not, anybody? Me and Tracy and Dana and Jackie and Charlie and Grace and Emma, Emma and, and Mallory and Colton and Randy and Lois. And she's nudging her husband. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Larry, we all do. So rather than give an altar call, won't we all stand up? I want us to offer God spiritual sacrifices. We're going to pray and then I'm going to dismiss. And guys, reflect on this. Look, it's in view of God's mercy. I'm not talking about self-effort. I'm not talking about you struggling. I'm talking about surrendering to the Lord and letting him come in and take over and renewing your mind, which we'll go further into as we go on. Whatever it is you're surrendering to the Lord, folks, put it in your hand, offer it up to God. I'm saved by grace through faith, and there's still things I surrender to the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm surrendering this to you. Lord, I'm giving you my life. Jesus, I want to serve you. No holds barred. I understand I'm a work in progress, but Lord, I want to be progressing and not going backwards. Lord, take my spiritual sacrifice this morning. I offer it up to you, Lord. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you every compartment of my heart. When you knock at my door, I'm opening up. Come in. I surrender, Lord, all these compartments of my life. I renew my mind. I let go. In Jesus' name, take it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, amen. We're done. Have a great week. See you at the fair.